This short video shows some of the work we've been doing at Dayton over the last couple of days on creating an immersive visualization around the IEEE VAST Challenge 2009 data. In the VAST Challenge, uh, we were looking at problems around the security of an embassy. Within the challenge itself, we were provided with a number of different uh, data sources. In particular, uh, we were provided with the proximity badge detection, in other words as people swipe in and swipe out of the building and also swiping in and swiping out of a secure area and secondly a set of data uh, related to IP traffic on the network showing which computer data was coming from and to, uh, which socket it was using and the request size and the response size. The aim was to look at this data so as to try and identify who might be a potential security risk. Our first task was to prepare the data. The proximity data was shown as a simple uh, CSV file the IP log data was showing source IP address, and in this case the uh, final two digits represented the uh, same as the employee ID number. Uh, the time of the transaction, the destination IP address, uh, the socket they were using, either 80 for standard web traffic, 25 probably for FTP, the size of the request, and the size of the response. As you notice, there's slightly different formats, so what we did was actually combine that data uh, into a single format and then created a generic region module for OpenSIM that would let us play through this data. So with this format we can now use almost any sort of data uh, in terms of replay. Visualizing the embassy itself was a fairly simple process, so we're here in uh, OpenSIM and we just uh, brought in a raster copy of the diagram of the embassy and then built the walls up around it and uh, it's all scaled to my avatar and so as with any uh, open sim or immersive type environment I've got the ability to actually walk through uh, the building past all the various cubicles within the environment we then place various objects to represent uh, the, on the data so here we have a blue arrow showing the uh, swipe cards heading in we also have a couple of counters that will be used to actually count how many people are in the building at any one time. If I go down to uh, the security classified area, again we've got another arrow showing us people logging into the classified area and another lo arrow logging people out. For each of the cubicles, we have placed two objects uh, for each person. First of all, a uh, icon representing the user themselves and then secondly a uh, drum representing the computer and you'll see as the simulation runs how these change in shape and even colour uh, depending on the activity uh, that's actually going on. You'll also notice on the corner of my screen I have a small uh, heads-up display uh, this gives me access to a menu which lets me start and stop uh, the simulation itself and pause it and we also have a couple of speed controllers so we can change the speed at which the simulation itself is running. As mentioned earlier, we used a region module so as to drive this simulation. Uh, the existing methods of getting data in and out of uh, Second Life and OpenSIM just aren't really suited to this quantity of data and, and this spe speed of data. Um, so what the region module does, and you see here it's uh, just loaded up uh, the, uh, the data file. Um, it loads the data into uh, memory and then receives the play and the stop and the reset commands uh, from within inside OpenSIM. As it finds a timestamp that's due to be played out, uh, it sends the information into OpenSIM and their local scripting languages actually send the, the data to the relevant icons so as to get them to change state or to change colour. So we've tried to keep the amount of code in the region module to the absolute minimum uh, and make it as generic as possible so we could use this with almost any sort of, of similar visualisation. Uh, you'll notice here we've got a total of 125,000 events uh, that we've actually loaded. This represents the IP traffic and the swipe card traffic over a period of 30 days. So now we're going to run the simulation uh, from inside OpenSIM. I'm just going to go to the menu and I've already loaded the uh, file so all we need to do is tell it to start the simulation. And here we can see the clock running, uh, counting through the hours on the first day. We're currently running about 900 times normal speed. And here we begin to see the traffic building up. So I'm just going to bring the resolution down dropping down to 100 times normal speed and now we begin to see the activity flowing uh, we've got people reporting into the office uh, we've got uh, people coming in and out of uh, the classified area we've got computers beginning to uh, register transactions basically the taller one of the computer bars is the more data is that's being transferred in or out or a combination of the two if the bar is green then it indicates most of the data is coming in and therefore not so much of a security risk if it's showing uh, on the red side, end of the spectrum then it's uh, indicating the majority of the data is flowing out 
which obviously is more of a risk. If we zoom in on the classified area, uh, we can see from the door swipes uh, the last people to swipe into the classified area and out of the classified area. We have another object that gives us a count of how many people are currently in the classified area. Um, a second one also shows the count, but this time actually visualizes it in terms of the size of the bar. And then a third object which actually gives us a list of the number of people, or the people actually currently in uh, the classified area itself. And these dynamically change as the simulation itself progresses. If I walk my avatar to the front door, again we can see we've got a toolbar uh, that's indicating how many people are currently uh, in the embassy as far as we know from the swipes. Uh, and again on the door swipe uh, we can see the information of the last person uh, to have swiped through. And the indicator changes from uh, blue to green as somebody actually goes through. If we now head down into the cubicle area, uh, we can see the activity on any of the individual uh, cubicles in terms of the PCs and uh, the uh, people themselves. So what we've got here is first of all the icons, the yellow people icons indicate uh, whether or not the person is expected to be in their cubicle based on whether or not they've entered the embassy itself and the fact they're not in the classified area. Uh, from the data we've got obviously we can't exactly place them in their cubicle but it gives us an idea of who should be in that part of uh, the embassy. Uh, the two drums then represent their computers and the height of the drum uh, indicates the total amount of data that's been transferred or received in any one transaction. Uh, the colour of the drum indicates whether or not that data is going in or going out. If the data is coming in, uh, the drum is green uh, because that's not a security risk. If it's going out, then it turns redder and redder. So somebody who sends a very large amount of data out but for very little return on a packet will get a very red drum indeed. As we can see here, somebody's just sent a very large or received a very large amount of data coming into the system. And in the neighbouring cubicle, uh, not only do we have an orange drum that came up there, uh, but also you may notice the drum is slightly wider uh, than the others. Uh, that indicates they were using FTP, uh, because again, FTP is potentially uh, more of a security risk in this particular scenario. So if we just zoom back, uh, we can see, get an overview of uh, the activity in the building. Again, we can see another large red drum. Uh, somebody we want, something we might want to look at in more detail. And we can just watch uh, the activity through the building, the people swiping in and out of uh, the building itself, swiping in and out of the classified area, and the activity on the individual computers. If we just uh, increase the uh, sample rate, uh, this is up to 200 times normal speed. Begin to see things happening uh, somewhat faster across the piece. And we're currently at uh, coming up to uh, 4 o'clock uh, in the afternoon. Let's just set it back down again. And, say because we've got an immersive environment here, we can actually walk through the environment as the data itself is playing. Um, and the aim of this is really to give us a little bit more of a visceral understanding um, of what might be going on and who might be in what particular part of the building at what particular times. Also how far away maybe one computer is from another so as to understand potentially where there may, might be a relatively isolated computer because we'd be able to see from the visualisation um, if they've got relatively empty cubicles around them uh, but they're actually transferring a large amount of data. Again that could be something uh, which becomes uh, suspicious and uh, needs a bit more investigation. So this is, this is very much just a start, it's something we've just knocked up over a day or so, uh, but we've now got quite a generic tool for looking at this sort of information. Uh, and what we'll be doing is looking at the rest of the data from uh, this and other vast challenges uh, in a bit more detail, doing our own analysis of it, combining a variety of different visualisation tools. If you'd like any more information on the, this particular visualisation or the system that's driving it, or on our data visualisation solutions in general, uh, then please email us at info at Thank you.